I spent the last 10 years focused on the climate crisis and I was working with a group of climate scientists at my university for five or six of those years. I still am working with them. Before I really began to appreciate the urgency of the crisis. And I, I think that there's, um, uh, as Jess has been talking about, the Yale Climate Studies and other sources talk about it too, is communication studies, is, is the difficulty of trying to, to really grasp the urgency and the scale of the problem. And so I'm gonna do some of that because I think that as teachers, you have a special responsibility to, to be able to understand what is happening. I begin by uh, a very powerful quote from Greta when she was 16 years old, um, which I think challenges us to uh, really think about what is the point of what we're doing and are we adequately addressing the urgency of the crisis? Um, of course, the breakdown is already upon us. Not only uh, high temperatures, droughts, and all the rest, but the polar vortex. I don't know how many of you got that uh, emergency alert on your phones a couple of winters ago when it was um, 17 below zero in Kalamazoo, at least. And the, uh, there was a fire at a natural gas plant outside of Detroit. Four million households in Michigan were suddenly in danger of losing their natural gas. Imagine if it had been just a little bit worse uh, and... Um, everyone had lost their natural gas heating in Michigan at 17 below zero. We would have had uh, not only floods of people on the freeway trying to go south, but we would have had people freezing death in their homes, much more so than it happened in Texas just now. But this is what climate change does, is it, is it um, impacts existing uh, infrastructure. Of course, uh, the IPCC has been talking about six degrees of centigrade Celsius of global warming as being possible within the lifetime of our, of our students today. Uh, and I'll talk a little more, I wanna talk more about that. So I wanna take us a little walk into the future if that should become what happens. Um, the Paris Agreement target of two degrees Celsius, which thank goodness we're now not leaving, um, is also really terrifying. And even two degrees is gonna have massive impacts. And the difference between two and four degrees of global warming uh, has been described as one of the world's leading scientists is the difference between uh, is the difference is human civilization itself. Uh, and this is some of the things that happen at four degrees Celsius of warming. And uh, of course, also the danger of setting in, into play uh, feedback loops that uh, spiral beyond our ability to control or do anything about it, whether that's Arctic ice melting or thawing tundra. Uh, the earth has seen six major uh, mass extinctions in the past. Uh, five of them were caused by greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases even played a role in the asteroid hit. Um, we're currently adding carbon to the atmosphere at a rate that's 10 times faster than it's ever been added at any time in Earth's history. And half the greenhouse gases that are there got there in the last 30 years. We're doing this very fast. We're doing it excel in an accelerating way, and we're doing it you know, right now. Um, if we were to warm as much as six degrees Celsius. Uh, that was the amount of warming that triggered the end Permian event, which took place 250 million years ago. That was the worst extinction in planetary history. 95% uh, of life on land and sea was completely wiped out. Um, and it was 20 million years before the earth was teeming with life again. We cannot, that must not happen at any cost. That must not happen. And IPCC reports are very conservative. I've been meeting with members of the IPCC down here in Mexico. Uh, there's a political involvement with the IPCC and so forth. Um, so this is, if anything, an, a rosy picture of the possibility of what we have to do. Uh, and young people are critical to what's happening right now. Uh, it's gonna be their planet. Uh, it's gonna be uh, their voice to speak out and make a difference. These are groups of different young people making a difference actually that in the lower uh, left hand is a young lady with a red hat on is one of my students. She then was occupying Nancy Pelosi's office after that picture was taken. Um, I think as teachers teaching secondary students, uh, it's critical that we recognize what young people need to know. And they need to know the, global, the impact of global warming on their world. They need to understand issues of generational and climate justice. Uh, and they need to recognize the urgency of acting now. And that does not mean acting when they grow up and are old enough to become climate activists or climate scientists or whatever. It means acting now, not while, while, while they're still young, because we only have a very short window to make the kind of differences that we need to make. Um, I put myself over there on the side. I was born when the uh, parts per million of 
carbon dioxide, we're 318, very safe level. When I was 31, we passed 350, which is presumably where we should be. Uh, and a year ago, um, I guess just over a year now, when I was 62, uh, we we're way up at 415. Uh, if we're going to keep the climate at uh, a uh, accept acceptable level uh, to say below two degrees, the next generation is gonna have to make massive reductions in their carbon footprint, much more massive than what we've gone through. And there's huge questions of climate justice. And I think these questions are not only for social science and language arts classes, I think they're for science classes also. Um, who caused the crisis? Who suffers first and most? How will the decisions of, of impact the young? What is the experience of being a climate refugee? Uh, what is America's role? What is our role with human beings in relationship to, to plants and the natural world? These are vital questions that uh, are huge and important, and we need to be talking about in school uh, all the time uh, in all content areas. Uh, and I think that one of the greatest problems right now is that very little climate education is going on. I mean, I, I've studied the next gen science standards and uh, there is climate change appears in them, but none of the kinds of justice questions I'm talking about show up at all. And the urgency of the problem is also not adequately addressed. And the scale of the problem is not adequately addressed. And in fact, by going on and teaching the way we're teaching, by teaching the same content in the same areas, we, as teachers, we know we're overwhelmed. We've got too much work to do anyway. We've got too much curriculum to fit into the existing program. But if we just keep going on the way that we've been going on, it's a form of denial. You know, even if, we, even if we bring up the topic of climate change, but don't adequately focus on it and address it, it's a form of denial. And I think we have to think very carefully about our role as teachers in this, in this context. Uh, I think it's also critical that we tell the truth. And I think that, that, that that's the, one of the mantras of Extinction Rebellion, which is one of the leading uh, social action groups on climate, the climate crisis. But I think that as teachers, look deep within ourselves and recognize our serious responsibilities to our students and to our communities of telling the truth. And that means addressing politics. And I, I, I agree with Jess that there are ways that we can communicate across party affiliation and that we can work with people from different points of view, but we also have critically examine the politics. We have to know what's going on. I mean, what happened under the Trump administration was, was unbelievably terrible. I mean, not only did we withdraw from the Paris Agreement, but all the efforts that have been made in the past in this country were put into reverse. And that, that cannot happen. And, it had, and the, frankly, the Republicans that did that have to take responsibility for it. And Democrats haven't been perfect either. And so we need to look critically at uh, and help young people think critically about that. We're preparing students for a democratic society. They've got to be critical thinkers. And they also have to be activists. If you're going to be in a democracy, it's not just a matter of writing a letter to your senator. You have to understand the depth of what it means to be a citizen, uh, especially in a, in a context in which the entire planet is at risk. For studying activism, I especially recommend this book. This is an uprising. It's a very powerful and useful book about um, how you can make a difference as, in, in your communities and it, making a strong social change. It's not just about changing our own individual behavior. Honestly, that's not going to do it at all. We've got to make a difference at a at national and global levels. And that means working with others in organizations. And there's a lot of ways to be engaged in nonviolent action. Gene Sharp is the expert in that. And here's you know, just the very tip of the iceberg. And we have to also inquire globally. We have to turn our attention into inquiring into the nature of this problem and how it works. My students have done a lot of things. I'm gonna show give myself as an example. Uh, my students have used uh, creative writing to address the climate crisis and shared poetry short stories and essays, which they published online, which they've read at various different kinds of meetings and events. Um, they've led community discussions about climate change. They've written climate manifestos, their statements of their own beliefs about it, and that has empowered them to speak out uh, at various gatherings. I had um, students have organized teach-ins, uh, inviting different people to speak, including student students and other community members. Uh, they've taken on different kind of action projects. They've put, we've put on films and had people come and talk and have a panel afterwards uh, and so forth. Um, we've done a lot of different things and, and we've used the social media and the internet, a very powerful way to communicate. And um, there's, my students have done all these different uh, online activities that are very important. Uh, you know, I'm emphasizing the crucial necessity to be no longer just taking, sitting where we are, you know, uh, 
I, Bill McKibben wrote this lovely statement about this book that, that I was actually the primary author of that uh, I want to share because I know some of you are English teachers, I understand. Um, but I think this is important for all disciplines too. He says, the scientists and engineers have done their work providing a timely warning on climate change and producing the technologies that would help take it on. It's the rest of us that have so far failed and it's largely a failure of imagination. Precisely the reason we have English class and many other classes too, of course, this book will help teachers understand their craft in light of the planet's great crisis. Uh, and the importance of being able to imagine what can happen and imagine how we can change it and do it differently. Um, there's some things that I'm currently doing. I'm, I'm on a, this sabbatical writing a book that I, this is a fake book cover that I just created for the sake of this talk, but it's called, it's gonna be called Facing Apocalypse, the Urgency and Ethics of Teaching Climate Crisis. And I'm, I'm working with teachers and learning about some of the, the most, most powerful kind of teaching that's happening that I think we need to hear about from each other. Uh, I've also been participating with a number of different kinds of social movements. See, there's several pictures of me down in the lower corner there at Black Lives Rally movement. Uh, with my Extinction Rebellion shirts on and carrying, and my wife actually carrying uh, Black Lives Rally. This is uh, on Black Friday, just before the months before the pandemic began. That's me laying out by a by a, a fake coffin inside of a, a supermarket, inside of a, a, a shopping mall. And I'm involved in a die-in here when I was in, in, in Cardiff, Wales, because it's one of the cities most endangered by sea level rise. Um, so we have to act with enormous speed. I mean, uh, one of the great writers about climate change family is, is Jewish and he talks about what it was like for his family to leave Germany just before Hitler was beginning, uh, you know, about the war was about to happen and, and ultimately the, the Holocaust. And we're kind of in the situation of Jews in that time because if we don't act, if it's, it's gonna come down upon the whole planet. Uh, here's a bunch of different resources that might be of use to teachers. Uh, and I want to, um, you know, uh, signal, I, I don't think there's anyone that's in a more important position to make a massively important impact on the climate crisis than, than a middle school or high school teacher in every single discipline. I think you guys, uh, your work is already very heroic in the first place. Uh, and I think that the situation we're in right now, your work is extraordinarily important. And I'm devoting my, all of my efforts to try to support that in whatever way I can.